welcome to this tutorial. So let's just get straight into it. Some of the things you're gonna need are two different colors of yarn. So I use a dark purple. This is the Red Heart Super Savers. It's a size four. And then the Big Twist, also a size four. Make sure whatever two yarns you're using that they're the same in thickness or in weight because if not, it ends up not being as cute. You will also need a pair of scissors, your crochet hook. I used a 5.5 millimeter size hook, but use whatever hook that you have available to you. Um, if you use like a smaller size hook or like thinner yarn, the bag will come out a little smaller. If you use bigger, so it'll come out bigger. And then you also need some bobby pins or stitch markers and something to measure. So this tape measure. I would say this bag is pretty, it's like beginner to intermediate. So the template that I used that I made for this bag is in the description. You need to follow along. I explained how to like follow it in the beginning and then I leave you to finish it yourself. Then I explain how to do the straps and all of that and then your bag is finished. So. I'd say this is a pretty straightforward bag as long as you follow the template, take your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all while you're making it, just let me know, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Timestamps are also in the description. The pattern, once again, is in the description and I hope you like. If you end up making this bag, by the way, please tag me on Instagram or on TikTok. You can follow me here. And thanks. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. I'll see you in the next one. No, I'll see you right now as we do the tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on this wavy bag, okay? So first things first, I wanna give you some measurements of my bag, just in case you guys wanna know for when you're making it yourself, but across is about nine inches and right here is eight and a half inches so the template that i used for this bag will be in my description i made it myself exactly like step by step on how to make each row because every row you're doing is going to be like slightly different so you can get this wavy effect and yes so Make sure to look at my description and follow that as you follow along this video. So right now I'm pretty much just gonna show you guys how to like start off this bag and how to follow the pattern. So to start off, we're gonna start off with the foundation chain. The hook I'm using is a 5.5 millimeter size hook. Everything that I use will be in the description just in case you want it. Here are the yarns that I'm using a dark purple and a pink. So for me, I have way more of the pink, so I'm gonna use it as my foundation chain. So holding the yarn like this, you're gonna X it over, pinch that center point, X, pinch, push your two fingers through and grab the yarn like that and pull until you have a loop like this. Then you're gonna take your hook, push it through, and tighten this off. Oops, okay. Tighten this off. And right here, we're gonna chain 45. So you can do this as many as you want. I would say like maybe 45 if you want it bigger, maybe like 55, 65. If you want it smaller, 35. Most likely just try to keep it an odd number. But if also, if you end up making this a different number, you won't be able to follow the template that I made exactly. You probably have to calculate the extra bits on your own. So for me, 45. So you're gonna grab it here. You're gonna go under and chain. That's one. Under, pull two. Under, pull three, four, five, six. And it'll look like this. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way until you reach 45. So right here, we have a chain of 45. And, ooh, there is a hair. Okay, and when you look at the top here, 
we're gonna skip our previous chain and go into this one All right so we're gonna push our hook through the second one like that grab your yarn on the other side pull it back through and you have two loops yarn over and pull that one through these two and that is your first single crochet so this whole bag is going to be in fours four single crochets then transitioning four single crochets so that was our first one and now we're going to look here for our second one push through grab the yarn yarn over second single crochet push through grab the yarn yarn over third single crochet and then for the fourth one the fourth one is where we're gonna add our next color so on every fourth of each color you're gonna do this so you're gonna push through grab your yarn and instead of yarning over with your other color you're gonna move on to your new color so to attach this you're gonna hold it like that you're simply gonna hook this new color and pull it through these two like so so as you can see, you're gonna have one, two, three, four of the pink. And now we're gonna work with um, the purple color. And while you're working, you're gonna wanna hold down the tail of the purple and the long part of the pink color. We're gonna weave it through as we work along. So now moving on to the purple color, we're gonna go into that next opening, pushing through, grabbing, your anchor or your anchor of the purple yarn, the longest one. And we're gonna hold these two other strings on top, pushing through, grabbing the purple and pulling it back, holding these two still on top like that. Gonna yarn over with this purple and pull it through for number one. Now, I like to hold on to the foundation chain of whatever we're working on. I mean, not the foundation, the anchor chain, you know, the one you're really working with. I like to hold on to that while pinching these two next to the chain. So next opening, pushing through, grabbing our purple, pulling it back, yarning over and pulling it through. So that's two, three, and on the fourth one, we're gonna change back to this pink color, okay? So pushing through, grabbing the yarn, coming back, and something that you need to make sure you're doing whenever you're transitioning colors is to pull on the opposite color. So right now the pink one, so we can tighten this off. So you, it just makes it look more neat, okay? So here I'm gonna pull on the pink color to make this more needs make it tighter okay so now for this one we're gonna yarn over with the pink color and pull it through so there we have not sure if you can really tell one two three four one two three four so now we're gonna hold the purple on top of the chain and we're gonna work with the pink color so pushing through the next opening Grabbing the pink, coming back around, yarning over, and that's our first for the light pink, so that's number one. Pushing through, coming back, number two. Pushing through, three, like that. And you see how you can kind of see that purple on, on, on the back side of the pink? You don't want to see that. So what you do is, during your fourth one, pushing through, coming back, we're gonna pull on the long purple string. We're gonna pull on it while holding this down and it's gonna shrink it like that. So then you don't see it as much. So pulling that, right? And then we're gonna yarn over with this purple to go on to the next color. Like so. Now again, we're just gonna keep working in fours, okay? Making sure that your work stays nice and tight. So pushing through and making sure that you weave in this bit, right? All the way. So we're gonna keep doing this every four. 
switching back from light to dark and making sure we pull on the chain or the color that's underneath as we go along to keep everything nice and neat. And I'll meet you back when we're at the end of this row and I'll teach, uh, wow, <laughs> stumble. I'll meet you back when we're at the end of this row, okay? And I'll teach you how to move on to the next row and how to follow along with the template that I have in the description, okay? I'll be back. All right, so right here I'm coming to a close end for row one, and whatever color you started with, you should be ending with on this row. So I have two more, so one, and then my last one. And for the first four rows, we're gonna keep the same pattern, right? It's gonna be the same thing, and then we're gonna transition and start to move the pattern along to the wave effect, but for four rows, just keep the same color stacked on top of each other. So at the end of each row, all you wanna do is just chain one, like that, flip your work around, and we're gonna start doing our single crochets at the top here. So you wanna push through your first opening, like that, and when you go through, you should have both lines of the V on your hook, so push through, grab your yarn, other side, come back, yarn over and pull through and that's one. Also, you see how your purple is sticking out or mine is pulling on that string to make it less visible. And we're still gonna make sure to keep it on top as we work so we weave it in. That's number two, three, like so, pulling on the purple, three, and then for number four is where we're gonna transition to this dark purple again. So pushing through, grabbing the pink for the last time, and yarning over with the dark color, like that. And now we're gonna start working with the dark purple. So pushing through this next opening, coming back, doing the first one, second, third, pulling on the pink, and then going to this fourth one, pulling through with the purple, tightening off the light pink and yarning over with our new color, so the pink, like so, all right? So we're gonna keep doing this until we have four completed rows of, oh, that one's kind of tight. Oh my gosh. Does this ever happen to you? Like one of the holes? Ugh. It's just super tight. I don't know why. I was, I do know why. It's because I pull it really tight. <laughs> but we're going to keep doing this for four rows. So just to give you a visual, row one, we did chained one and now we're doing row two right now we're on row two i'm gonna go all the way to this end chain one do row three chain one row four and i'll meet you at the end of row four to teach you how to do row five in a slightly different vibe yes <laughs> so keep doing this and if you have any questions please let me know if you need any clarification or if you want me to slow it down you can always message me on Instagram and I will try to help you out. Like here one more time. Tightening off the purple, yarning over, oh no, yeah, tightening off the purple and yarning over with the purple to transition. So when you're doing this, just again, you should have one, two, three, four of the light, the light color, then one, two, three, four, the dark color one two three four so you know that you're doing it right and all right i'll meet you at the end of row four dang let's tie again pa 
Okay. <laughs> BRB. Okay, so if your yarn ever gets very tangled like this while you're crocheting and then you like, it's frustrating, right? This is what I do. I pull this a little bit, whatever, the, whatever loop you're working on. I go to the end of this mess where it starts to be straight and I pull it like these. I split them like that. And I pull it until my work undoes itself. And then, boop, right at the middle again. And then your work is easy. It's not all tangled mess. Not all, it's not a tangled mess anymore. So do that. I do that like every so often when I like the mixing of yarns gets just like way too unbearable. So that was like four rows in. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. And I'm finishing up row four real quick. So I'm gonna go all the way until the end with this pink. And then what we're gonna wanna do is look over at the template and look for row five because that's what the row we're gonna start. So row five starts with three of your lighter colors. So for me, it's the pink tight oops it's the last one right chain one flipping my work over and now we're gonna do just three of the pink so we're gonna go into that first entrance right there so that's one two and then third one our last one three pulling on this darker color underneath and we're going to yarn over with our new color and now again we're going to start working in fours one two three and then the fourth one pulling the light color and transitioning back all right, like that. And then continuing with this light color. So one, two, three, four, pulling, transitioning, whoop, transitioning, and it's like this, okay? So your work is slightly gonna be twisted. And what you wanna do is on this side, while you're on row five, whatever side you're looking at, take a stitch marker, because for me, we're gonna have a good side and then we're gonna have a bad side. Well, you can really choose whatever side you want, but I just like to keep a marking so that when you look at your piece of work, okay, let's say I'm just marking this off right here, just anywhere so I remember. This is a bad side, so when you place it this way, this is the good side that will match the same thing as the template. So. Right now, row five has three light colors on the left side. And then you look at your template, row five has three of the light colors. So we're gonna keep doing this, four, 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 four. And at the very end, we should have four of the light colors and one of the dark, okay? So I'm gonna keep doing this back and I'll meet you at the end of row five so I can show you how to move on to row six and how you can follow the template as you move along. Okay, so here I am getting close to finishing row five. So I have one, two, three, and then the last one, the fourth one of the pink, pulling the purple one tight and then transitioning to this purple. So for row five, at the end, we have one dark color. So one of this purple pushing through both parts of the V like so. Pushing through, grabbing the dark color, coming back, yarning over and doing our single crochet, okay? And now we're gonna chain one with that color. We're gonna flip our work. And now, since we're on the right side or the good side of our pattern, since this is on the back as reference, 
we're gonna look over to our template, go to row six, all the way to the right side, because that's where we are right now. And it says three of the dark color. So here I am gonna go into the first one. That's one with the dark, one dark, pushing through two of the dark. And then the last one, number three, I'm gonna pull onto this light color to tighten our work off, you see? And then we're gonna yarn over with our new color and pull it through. All right, and now we're gonna continue working in four. So four of the pink, one, two, like that, three, and four tightening, transitioning, and then continuing. So for this row, row six, let's see, let's see. Row six, we're gonna end with one light color at the end, and then moving on to row seven. So I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna like walk you along just a few more rows, but if you kind of get the concept so far, you're basically just gonna follow the written picture template that I have and making sure that you're counting as you go on the end so you follow the waves, okay? So I'll be back once I reach the end of this row. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Always remember to pull on the color that's underneath. Big difference, big difference, okay? Okay, so I'm here coming to a close end for row six. I have one dark already done. This is number two, three, and then my fourth one. And now we have one more and it needs to be a light one, okay? So I'm just gonna go through, do this one, yarn over, and that's our last light. But if you look at the template, for row seven, which is one right immediately on top of this one, we need to start with three dark colors. So for this chain one that you usually do at the end of the row, since the color that's gonna be on top of this one is gonna be a dark one, I'm gonna do a chain one with this color, flip our work like so, and then starting off, we're already attached with the dark color. We're gonna push through and do Three. So that's one, two, and then three. Pulling this pink color and then yarning over with their new color. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see with the dark color, but one, two, three, and now we're gonna go on to move on to our rows of four. Rows of four? areas of four, stitches of four. So four of the pink and then four of the purple again, transitioning back and forth all the way until we reach the end. And this one, according to the template, it's gonna end with one of the lighter colors, so the pink for me. So I'll meet you one more time at the end of row seven to show you how to move on to row eight. But after that, I'm pretty much gonna be leaving you guys to follow along with the template. Okay, so I'm here finishing row eight. I have two more of the dark color. One and two, transitioning back into this lighter color. Finishing off with the light, okay? Like so. So for row eight, Moving on to row nine, if you look at the template, um, row nine starts off with two of the lighter colors. So we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and do two of the light colors. So going into the first one, grabbing the yarn, yarning over, that's number one. And then number two, so pushing in, coming back, and then transitioning like so. Then we're going to continue working in groups of four. So one, two, three, four of the dark, and then back to the light. So one, two, three, fourth one. 
yarning over into this light color. So what I would say for this pattern, which is very helpful for me, is making sure that I have this stitch marker on the back side. So once I finish a row, I know which side is the good side and how to look at my template, making sure it's facing the right way. And after you finish a row or once you're on a row, what I like to do is when I'm doing a row, I like to highlight the, highlight that entire row so I know that I'm at that spot. So right now I'm on row nine. So on my template over there, I have row nine highlighted so that when I come to the end, I it's like quicker for me to look at row 10 and look at the next steps. So always make sure that the start and the ending of your row matches up with the template because if not you may be accidentally um like skipped an opening i've done that a few times or maybe you like accidentally increased or decreased something is up so make sure that you follow the template going back and forth so please let me know if you have any questions if this template was helpful so i'm gonna leave you guys to finish all of this right until you make one in full okay so following the template for the beginning and the end and i'll meet you back once i'm done with this whole piece and I'll, next i'll show you how to do the bottom bit how to connect the bag and how to make the strap so happy crocheting i hope you guys enjoy this template. Honestly, this is the first time I've done this and I want to make sure that it's really clear on how to do it. So if you have any questions at all while you're doing this, please let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. I'll try to be as clear as I can and help you along the way, but I'll be back when I'm finished. All right, guys. So after lots of hand cramping and fiddling with all these strings, I'm back and I finished the back. I'm like about to end it off. So um, for this one, I just have four more pinks right here, four more of the light. So I'm just going to finish off doing the last ones of the single crochet. Okay, this is the last one. All right. So we're there. We're done, right? So right now, you can either, if this is your first one, I would say just pull this, right? Snip off this bit and then do a double knot right here. Just like uh, this one, I snipped it and then I tied a double knot so it stays in place, right? This is looking kind of crazy, okay. But once you do that, make a second piece exactly like the first one. So once you do that, come back to this and I'm going to show you how to connect them. So for me, you can either decide which side you like the most versus another one. So for me, I like this side more. So this is the side without our stitch marker. This is my favorite side. So once you have both pieces, we're gonna face both the good sides together so we can weave them together and then do what we gotta do, okay? So I have two of them. These are both my good sides, so I wanna put them facing each other, okay? Next, you can either grab some stitch markers. I have bobby pins because I always have a lot of bobby pins. And I'm gonna start like, pinning this in place so while we start weaving um our work doesn't move around too much so i'm gonna take a bobby pin and pin the bottom corner i'm gonna pin somewhere right here in the middle down here in the middle and then the right corner over here in the middle. And then at the top. So before this, I was gonna make like 
a bottom section and a side section, but after looking at the the my inspiration picture again, like it doesn't really have it. I think they did the original bag in one like continuous go, which I think would have been really hard. So this is easier just doing like two and then connecting it. But we're gonna go into the side where we have our work, right? Where we just finished it off. Sorry, so many strings that it's, ooh. So here is the last one, right? I'm gonna pull the purple nice and tight again. And what we're gonna do, since we didn't chain one yet, so we're gonna chain one, but with both of the strings. So yarning over and chaining one like that, okay? And now you can either decide to work with just one of the strings or with both of them. I'm just gonna do both of them to keep things maybe more sturdy. And I don't know, I just want to, so I'm gonna do it because I'm kind of lazy to cut off the other one. But we're gonna pretty much do a slip stitch along this whole bag. It looks like a lot right now, I know. But all you wanna do is go to this other corner, push through a corner, it can be kind of hard to find it, especially since this is like single crochet, so they're really tight. I'm gonna push through this corner. I'm gonna grab the two pieces of yarn, pull it back, right? And then pull this section through that one, like so. So pretty much these two pieces of yarn will be considered like as one now. Okay, and then now, as we have these two sandwiches, like sandwiched, we're gonna push through this panel and then the other panel, grab the yarn and pull them through. So, show you, I'm gonna push through this one and then right here, right? Like that, grabbing the yarn pulling it through the first panel and the second one, and then pulling these, 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 through those. Like that, okay? So we're gonna keep doing this all along the bag. I would say go slow with this because um, these are really like, it's a thick, um, material because we did single crochet like they're tighter so just take your time with it don't get too frustrated I also like to like claw at some of the strings because pushing with the front bit can be a little like harder I like to claw at it <laughs> until I grab the string like that and then I claw at the other side and then pull through both of them and then pull through again. I'm gonna continue doing these slip stitches and as we go along, we can remove the bobby pins once we get there. I'm gonna go all the way to this corner. And then when you get to this bottom section, I think it's way easier because you can just go through the looser part of this, that, that foundation chain that we did, right? You can go through both of them and then start doing our slip stitches like through there. You get what I mean, you know? Having both of the strings of the V attached and then doing our slip stitch along that, getting to our corner and coming back. And so I'll meet you when I'm close to this side and we're gonna flip the bag right sides out and then begin the straps. All right, so I'm back and I'm coming to a close end of doing the single crochets. So you wanna go all the way until this last corner, all right? You wanna go into this, whoa, 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 okay. This corner and this one, go into both that corners, grab your yarn and do your last slip stitch, okay? So for right now, I'm just gonna extend these 
while we flip this right sides out. So you can take off the little marks that we had originally. And now flipping it inside out, or right sides out. This is what she is looking like, super cute. Okay, so the sides, not a perfect alignment on the side. Some of the lines connect, some of them don't, but it's okay. So now we're gonna begin doing the straps. So you wanna take a ruler and since we're connected on the right side, I'm gonna do it here. You're gonna go from this um, middle section, right? And you wanna measure about two and a half inches. So right there, or you can do three inches if you want. You can make it whatever size you want, honestly. But I'm gonna do two and a half inches from that middle point here. And then I'm gonna take a bobby pin and mark this off. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this back side too. Two and a half inches right here and mark it off. So now we're gonna begin to disattach ourselves and we're gonna reattach ourselves near these stitch markers so that we can get a continuous looking line. So right here, all you wanna do is just chain one Pull it through, grab your scissors, and disconnect, cut it off, pull this one, and pull this one tight, and then doing a double knot. Make sure to weave in your ends, but you can always do that later. So, I'm gonna start right here. So wherever we have our stitch marker, I'm gonna push our hook through. And for me, since this is in the pink area, I'm just gonna grab the pink yarn, grab it and pull it through that opening. And I'm gonna set myself in place using a double knot. So one, two. And pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to follow the same pattern that we were doing in the bag up until it starts to become like the thinness of the strap we want. So, so I'm gonna push through that opening where we tie it off, pull it back and chain one. And now we're gonna begin to do our single crochets again. So I'm gonna do a single crochet into the opening that we're in right now one, two, three, and then since there's one that we didn't go into, we're going to add a fourth one here. So this is our number four, and this is where we're going to attach the darker color again. Okay, pulling that through, and then we're going to do four of this dark color, pulling our strings nice and tight. Remember that. Number one, two, making sure to like weave these little bits through. Three, and then four, pulling it tight and going back to the light color like that. Next one, one, two, and then here we're at the, the middle area where we connected the bag. So I'm just gonna try to work with it. That's three and four. So as you can see right here, it still continues to be pink. So I'm just gonna keep the pink going for right here. until I get to the purple. 
and I'm gonna push it over by one so it kind of gives that effect still. So I'm gonna do one of the pink on, on in the purple section. So right here, then pulling the purple string underneath nice and tight. And we're gonna transition back to the dark color. We're gonna keep going until we reach our stitch marker. So one, two, three, and four, oops, four, and then transitioning back to the pink for this section. Okay, and we're gonna go, we have two into the, until we reach the stitch marker, so I'm just gonna remove it. Go in. It's one, and then the last one, like that. So, giving you somewhat of a visual, we just kinda continued this, um, oh, that's, that's the extra piece. I'll leave that away later, but we kind of can, we're gonna try to, I don't know what's up with my words right now, um, but we're gonna wanna try to continue whatever wave we're at into the strap. Right here now we're gonna continue on to the next row and we're gonna wanna decrease every row now while also trying to continue this wave effect, so. As you can see right here, we have two pink and then four of the purple. So when we decrease, we're pretty much just gonna have one pink left, or we're gonna have, we essentially want the purple to shift over one position so it moves this way. So to do that, all you gotta do is chain one, right? I'm pushing this dark one in the back so it's less visible, but I'm gonna go into this first opening grab the pink yarn on the other side, come back, and then go into the second opening. But this time, I'm gonna grab the purple yarn since we're transitioning to the purple, like that. So we have two pink, one purple. I'm gonna yarn over with this purple and pull it through. Okay, pulling everything nice and tight. So that was our first decrease, mm-hmm, okay. And now we're gonna start the four count with this dark purple. We're gonna go in one, two, three, four. Transition back to this pink color. And then we're gonna continue this pink until Ignore that, I need to fix it. But we're gonna continue this pink right here until we're one till the end, and we're gonna move the purple one to the right side. Here we are, we have one more spot left. So I'm just gonna go in, come back, and I'm gonna yarn over with this purple so we can continue the wave like that and go into that dark color so it's shifted a little to the right, okay? So that's one, two, three, and then for our fourth one, we're gonna yarn over with the pink, okay? So one, two, three, four, and right here, we're gonna skip this last one because we wanna decrease. We're gonna pull our strings nice and tight and we're gonna chain one, okay? We're gonna chain one and we're gonna flip our work back. And now we're gonna begin to decrease on this side again. So how you decrease again, is this camera angle, it's kind of hard for me. I'm sorry. Okay, how you decrease is we're gonna go into this first opening, grab the yarn, come back. Then we're gonna go into the second opening, grab the yarn, come back. And then 
since we have two left, we're gonna yarn over with this purple color. Since we wanna transition it over one, we're gonna slide it over one. We're gonna pull through, okay? Now we're gonna start our four count again. So one, two, three, and four. Pull it through and switch off to the light color, okay? So I'm pretty much gonna keep going, trying to follow this swerve. And we're gonna go all the way until you reach this end. We're gonna skip the last opening and we're gonna chain one and we're gonna decrease again. So I'll show you when I come on this side, I'll show you how to do that one more time and I'll leave you to continue it. Now that we're here, we're just gonna want to chain one, skipping that last opening right here since we're decreasing, chain one, flipping our work around, and we're gonna try to continue this wave pattern. So if we're looking at it, it's going this way. So we want this pink to shift one into this purple section and this purple to shift one into this pink so it can continues going that way, right? Wave. So, I'm gonna show you how to decrease right here again. So we're gonna go into this first opening, pushing through, grabbing the pink yarn, coming back around, going into the second one, pushing through, grabbing the pink, coming back around. And for this one, we're yarning over with the pink and pulling it through like that. Okay, I'm gonna go into this one, do one more, one, two, and now we're gonna go into this purple section. We're gonna go in, do one, but we're gonna yarn over with this purple now. So one of the light pink got into the dark section. Now we're gonna do four of this dark one. We're gonna start our four count. One, two, three, and then four, pulling, yarning over with the light and pulling that. Not pulling that, um, yarning over and pulling through. Now we're gonna continue this pink section. Since this isn't an account of four, we're gonna do all of them, making sure that one of the pink is in the purple section, okay? We're gonna put one pink in the purple, so going in, and we're gonna yarn over with the dark to transition, okay? So right here, we have three purple and one pink left. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna skip that last pink one. We're gonna do these four, one, I mean three, one, two, and three. We're not gonna go into that last one. We're just gonna chain one and we're gonna flip our work to move on to the other row, okay? But before that, we're gonna look and see which way the waves are going. Right here, we're gonna want one of these light pinks to go into this dark section. So we're gonna decrease first. We're gonna go into, I don't know if you can tell really well with this darker color, but we're gonna go into this first opening, pull it through, second opening, grab the arm, pull it back. And this one, since we want the pink to move over one, and since we're almost at the last one, we're gonna yarn over with the light color and pull it through, okay? Gonna go into this next one and start doing our pink section. And then right here for this purple color, we want it to be one over. So we're gonna go in and start off this purple section right here. We pulled through with the purple. So this is our first one. All right. So we're gonna keep doing this pattern back and forth, trying to keep it as um, in that wave pattern as much as we can until our strap is about one inch, okay? So I'm gonna continue this. Okay, so I'm back. 
here's the strap so far right and i'm back with an inch and a half i know i was saying an inch but now that i'm looking at it, i think an inch and a half will be nicer and more sturdy for things so here is where we're going to begin just transitioning back and forth between the pink and the purple your light and your dark color so i skipped the last entrance right there i'm just going to chain one and i'm going to do a straight four rows of pink and then going back to purple so flipping my work around i'm gonna i'm no longer gonna do the decrease i'm just gonna put one single crochet into each of these openings and i'm just gonna make it all pink so first one you still want to weave in the dark purple under as you go. So first one, two, three, four, five, and all the way to this last one, which is six, okay? Tightening our work, gonna finish it off. And now we're gonna try to keep, we're gonna keep this straight. We're gonna chain one, flip our work around. And now here we're gonna do row two of just pink. So that was our first row of just a solid color. And now we're gonna do a second row of just a solid color. So going into our first opening right there, right here. We're gonna do our six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Going into that last one, pulling it through like so. Okay? We're gonna chain one, flip our work, and do our third row. Um, of just this pink color. Okay, so again, going to that first opening, coming back, it's one, two, three, pulling our purple color, four, five, and our last one of six. And here, we're gonna just chain one of the light pink, flip our work, and this is gonna be our last row of the light color. So let me just quickly finish that. Okay, here's the last opening. We're gonna push through, do our last one, nice and normal, but this time we're gonna chain one with this purple color because we're gonna transition to four rows of the dark color. So flipping our work back, we're gonna do um, six of the single crochets here, just as we were doing here to keep it straight. But now it's gonna be with a dark color. I go in, come back, like so. Two, three, four, five, and our last one of six. Pulling the pink nice and tight underneath and chaining one. Okay, so I'm back now with the strap. I also wanted to say, I'm pretty sure in the reference image, the, the color alternating, they're put at like a diagonal. You could do that too. I just felt like this was gonna be easier to like block it off. Plus like when you're wearing it, you won't really you know, see it, but here I'm going, I'm at the purple right now. I just finished my last one. All you wanna do is chain one, pull it through and cut your yarn. Okay, take, um, cut the pink one too, or the one that's underneath. And right here, I'm just gonna double knot them together. 
So one, my hands are like kind of numb from crocheting for hours, but, and then number two. I'm gonna pull you out just a bit. You're gonna see everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But this is like what the bag really looks like. So starting from this base area right here where we connected ourselves here. Okay, that's three inches. And then here where we go straight all the way. This strap is 12 inches exact. And again, it's about an inch and a half in, in width. So you can make the strap as long or as short as you want. It's all personal preference. So here's two and a half at this purple mark. And then again, right here, two and a half is right here. Okay. I'm gonna push through that opening, grab the purple yarn. My hands are so numb, guys. What do you guys do when you crochet for a bit and your hands feel really stiff? Like I try to stretch them out, but I probably need a break soon, but I'm just gonna, I'm like, I'm literally almost done with this. I'm gonna finish it and I'm gonna show you. So pulling this through, we're gonna double knot ourselves in place. So one, two. We're gonna push through that same opening we attached ourselves with into. We're gonna grab the yarn on the other side, come back, chain one. And then we're gonna do our first single crochet into that same opening. So it's one. Also looking at the pattern. So our wave of purple is going this way. So we wanna shift one of the dark purples into this pink pattern. So I'm gonna do one, boop, boop, boop. Is that, it's not that opening. Okay, here's the second one. Then I'm gonna do one more of this purple and then transition into the light pink now. and begin doing our light pink. Three. And our fourth. Gonna yarn over with the dark purple to transition back. Now we're gonna do four of these dark purples. So one, and then the fourth one and then transitioning back into the light pink. Doing, since um, it's looking a little crazy right here, but this is pink and this is pink. So we're gonna keep the pink, but we're gonna make sure that we're gonna continue this pink. And so we put it, have one of the pink stitches in this purple section. So we're continuing to shift, we're gonna do our pink here and making sure we put one of them into the purple right there. Yarning over the dark purple. Do one, two, three, and then the fourth one. Transitioning into this pink for this last, literally just for like one last stitch right here. <laughs> pink, make everything tight. Chaining one with the purple because again, just putting our work flat just for clarity purposes. Uh, we want this purple wave to go this way. So here when we do our um, first decrease, we're gonna want it to be with the purple so we can continue the pattern there. Moving this one pink over here, you know, shifting it over, okay? So, chaining one with the purple, flipping our work, 
and we're going to decrease. So going into the first, first opening, grabbing our coming back, and then into the second opening, grabbing the yarn, coming back, yarning over, we have three. I'm going to pull this one through those three. All right. Then we have one. And then our last one, we're going to transition to a pink color right here so that we get this one pink is shifted this way, like so. I'm going to keep this pink going, right? I'm going to keep this pink going. And then we want to make sure that we get this purple shifted one into the pink section. Following our wave pattern again, we're going to do the same thing we did on this side, right? Keep going until your strap is about one and a half inches and then transition um, into the straight. Uh, section when you have six stitches or how many ever stitches you had over here make sure it's the same on this side and start doing the color blocking same way and then I'll come back give you the measurements of how I make mine and I'm going to show you how to connect it all right so I'm back with the second strap and just giving you measurement of where I started to go straight I went for about for a little more than four and a half inches. Just like one, two, three, four colors. So at this last section, I cut off the purple string because we're no longer gonna be working with it. And now we have the pink string, okay? You do not wanna chain one when you're connecting these two pieces. You wanna make sure they're nice and in shape, right? So that they line up correctly and you're gonna put them together. And we're gonna begin doing a slip stitch. So pushing through the corner of the purple, I'm gonna grab the yarn, the anchor yarn. I accidentally like cut it. I did this and I had to undo it, but your anchor yarn, the one connected to the yarn, well, like imagine this one is. I'm gonna grab our yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through here, okay? Going into that first opening, push through, pull through, and then do a little slip stitch, okay? Pushing through, just to show you, you want both of the Vs, like that, and like that, connected onto your hook. When you push through, grabbing the yarn and pulling it through. So I'm gonna do that all the way into the end And then you just want to chain one. You're going to pull your work through and then snip it off. But I already did that. And then you pull it through like that. Okay. Now at this end, I would just add a knot to secure it in place. And then this other side, we have a lot going on. So this is the um, string we were working with before, the purple one. All I'm going to do is knot it using another string close by, like that. One, and then two, okay? At this point, you can be pretty much done with the bag right now, okay? But for me, I want to add a border all along both sides, like a slip stitch border. You don't have to do this. It's, um, very optional. We're going to connect ourselves in an area. I'm just going to connect like right here, let's say, in this in this corner. I'm going to push through, grab our yarn, pull it back, and we're going to do a double knot to secure ourselves in place. One, two, and I'm going to begin doing slip stitches. So pushing through that same opening, 
Okay, grab our yarn, bring it back, chain one, okay? Going into this next opening, pushing through, grabbing it, cutting back, and slip, slip stitch, okay? Again, just going throughout the top. And when you push through this top opening, you wanna make sure you have both of the, the yarn strands attached and then pulling it through. So I'm gonna go in one space at a time, like so. I'm gonna bring this all the way here, up here, and then across the strap. So when you reach this area and over here, there's not gonna be an exact opening that you can go into, but I would just say to keep it as even as possible as you can. So I'll just show you when I get there. Okay, so like right here in this area, in the corners, I'm literally just gonna go into whichever openings that I see that are about like, that are kind of spaced out. Okay, trying to make it even. Like so. Oops. And then on to the strap area. Okay. So that's going to like smooth out the the edges a little bit, right? So then when we get to the strap, also I would just say, try to make it even, spacing. Like so. And we're gonna continue this slip stitch all the way across here, going through this area, just trying to keep it at the top, making it even as well over here until we reach where we started again then we're just gonna um cut our string off we're gonna pull through cut it off pull through and then <laughs> what <laughs> pull through we're gonna pull it like this snip it and then tie it with this other string and then weave in our ends then you gotta do is flip your work once more and do the same thing on the other side in your bag Mine isn't done yet, I still gotta finish it, but I'm gonna leave you guys to do it. After that, your bag will be done. Make sure to weave in your ends or snip any bits that you don't want. I'd snip that. Your bag is done, so congrats. I hope this tutorial was good. I hope you enjoyed. I hope your bag's super cute. If you end up making this bag, please make sure to tag me on Instagram here or even on TikTok, it's the same handle and yeah, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.